because what, um, what happened was the, uh, the, the, the original legislation the Bush people pushed w would have simply said that the decisions of the Secretary of Treasury pursuant to the authority of this act are non-reviewable and committed to agency uh, discretion and may not be reviewed by any court of law or any administrative agency. So what you were doing was basically giving $700 billion to one man and trusting him to fix the nation. There were no standards, just blindly say, do what you think best. So, and, and how exactly would, uh, would this arrangement be different from what they have as, as far as the crony capitalism of Russia and other places? Well, the, uh, the difference is in America, that power would be used for the good of the people, not for the oligarchs. And, and how can Americans be assured of this, considering that the bailout is being done in secret with almost no court oversight? And uh, Americans can be sure because politicians tell them so. This, uh, this is what people are submitting to. This is, this is how, how the government is trying to, um, trying to fix, fix the economy and doing all kinds of uh, deals. Um, there, there's no reason to assume that the people in Washington who are running this bailout are going to be any more competent than the masterminds who created the incentives for the bad mortgage loans or some of the, uh, some of the um, Wall Street finaglers who made slick deals that leveraged their firms into ruin. And yet, you have, this, you have this notion promoted by the media that we have to trust these guys or else we'll all be doomed. This, uh, this was the same nonsense we heard after 9-11, that we had to rally around the government, that people had to put the government on a pedestal because that's the only way that we'd have homeland security. And now the only way we're going to have financial security is that we put blind trust in the Treasury Secretary. But, uh, but the media, uh, the Bush administration and Congress says, don't worry, there is oversight. That's, you know, that's always reassuring. Uh, the, uh, the, the final version of the bill had uh, two different oversight panels, one composed of congressmen and the other consisting of high-ranking government officials. You know, this is, this is actually the, the idea of creating a, 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 an oversight board of members of Congress because, you know, that's how we got in this damn mess. You had all those congressmen sitting there and getting tens of millions of dollars of uh, contributions and kick, uh, benefits from the financial services industry, from Fannie Mae, from Freddie Mac, and these are the folks who helped lead, us, who, who helped lead the economy over the cliff on this. And now these are the folks who are going to be doing oversight. Well, that's, that's a great Washington solution. And, you know, it, it, I don't know how many of y'all have ever gone to Capitol Hill to watch an oversight hearing, uh, Congress in action, but it's, it's, um, it, it's a really good place for breeding cynics because most, you know, most of the congressmen uh, are not able to ask a simple follow-up question. Most of the congressmen sit there and have their aides come up and give them a list of questions and some of the congressmen don't read so well. And they sit there and they stumble through the question and, and the administration witness will uh, give either some brazen lie or, or some point that's totally on, uh, on a different subject and, and the congressman will just kind of look up and, and, and then look down and re read the next question. This is how they do oversight. And I, I, I'm not exaggerating uh, because I've, you know, there's, there's plenty of times I've watched Congress do oversight on an issue I was following or writing about. And I sit there and it's just like, you know, it's kind of like watching deer in a headlight because most of them are simply uh, clueless and then some of the other ones are just utter demagogues. And, uh, but, but we're supposed to be, be reassured that, there is, that there's going to be a congressional oversight board for the financial bailout. Now, there's a second financial, a second oversight board. It includes five members and it's headed by the Secretary of the Treasury, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, the chairman of the SEC, and the, house, the, the housing secretary and the director of the Federal Home Finance Agency. Now, this is a great group to be oversight, uh, exercising oversight of what the Secretary of Treasury does. Uh, and just the fact that Congress and the administration w w would come up with a list like this, this epitomizes their contempt for the American people. Because uh, it was, uh, so the, you know, the, the Americans are supposed to believe the Treasury Secretary is going to be guarding Americans against how he uses his own power. And Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve helped cause a lot of this current debacle. And there's, there's no evidence the Fed, Federal Reserve Chairman has gotten the point. 
Uh, you know, and you've got the housing secretary of housing there. You know, how many secretaries of, of housing have almost gone to Leavenworth? I mean, there was a guy pushed out of power, I think, in the last year or so, uh, who was, who's, he's undergoing a lot of federal investigations right now. I, 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 don't, I don't think he's been indicted, but uh, I, I don't know if he's buying any green bananas either. Uh, and under Clinton, Cisneros, he was um, pursued by independent counsel for many years. There are other housing secretaries that went down in corruption. So these are the folks that uh, are going to be overseeing how this bailout is done. And it's a complete fraud. Uh, even the Washington Post admitted that today in a front page story. That, you know, it was, uh, it was almost like a, a scene from Casablanca where the inspector says, he's shocked, he's shocked. But, but my impression is that Washington Post really was shocked that there's almost no oversight going on in how this money is being spent. These hundreds of billions of dollars are being spent. And, you know, this is not just a budgetary waste. This, this profoundly affects the entire economy because uh, the U.S. government so far is being very secretive. We don't know who's getting the money. We have no idea uh, uh, what terms are being uh, used for these bailouts. Um, we have no idea who's pulling which strings, though there's a tidal wave of new lobbyists coming down. Um, part of the frustration, too, with this whole deal is it is an utter abdication by Congress. I mean, if, if, if Congress wanted to be responsible and say, okay, there's a problem, so let's have hearings, let's set standards, let, let's have clear guidelines, that would be one thing. It, it probably wouldn't work out very well, but at least there'd be standards, but instead, um, almost all, all the confidence has been vested in finding the right dictator. And how in, how in heaven's name Hank Paulson became the right dictator, I don't know, but, you know, uh, perhaps the media is biased in favor of bald guys. Now, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of talk um, by liberals and by parts of the media that this entire financial collapse proves the free market failed. And this is almost becoming a mantra. There was, there was a wonderful saying that uh, Friedrich von Hayek had about how intellectuals are professional second-hand dealers in ideas. And, and, and what the intellectuals do is not look at the actual issue, but, but judge an idea or a fact based on all these prevailing preconceptions. And this is what's happening now with this housing, uh, with this financial collapse. You have all these, all these intellectuals, all these pundits that are talking about, well, this is evidence of the failure of capitalism, the failure of markets, so on and so forth. If you look at the actual place where all this started, it was a massive political failure. For instance, uh, George Bush, one of, the, one of the things he was proudest of in his first, in his re-election race in 2004 was something called the uh, American Dream Down Payment Act. Uh, Bush, was, uh, Bush pushed uh, government giveaways of down payments to favored home buyers. Bush was determined to end the bias against people who wanted to buy a home but didn't have any money. <laughs> this is almost exactly what the administration said. I mean, there was there was a uh, there was a, there was a, there was a fact sheet put out by the uh, White House in 2002. It said that the the uh, single biggest barrier to home ownership, the single biggest barrier to home ownership, is accumulating funds for a down payment. Well, that's a sa also the single biggest barrier for buying a Mercedes-Benz, you know, but, but the politicians haven't made that a question of social justice yet. Uh, Congress, uh, Congress passed the, uh, the Bush American Dream Act in 2003, and it authorized federal handouts of up to $10,000 for people to want to buy their first home. And Bush also was pushing the Federal Housing Administration to start making zero uh, down payment loans guaranteed by the government. This, this was a major factor in accelerating the housing crash and burn. Now, uh, you know, down payment, down payment handouts have somehow become part of building up the American character. Bush proclaimed in 2003, home ownership is more than just a symbol of the American dream. It is an important part of our way of life. Core American values of individuality, thrift, responsibility, and self-reliance are embodied in home ownership. Well, it seemed like in Bush's eyes, self-reliance was so wonderful the government had to subsidize it. <laughs> now, these, these, these down payment aid programs were modeled after uh, other down payment assistance programs that, that proliferate, proliferated in the late 1990s. Uh, 